One of my favorite improvements to how I work in Figma has been the addition of the icon wrapper component. In this video, we're gonna walk through exactly how the icon wrapper works and actually create one ourselves. But first, a little bit of background. The reason an icon wrapper needs to exist is whenever you have an icon that is inserted within a component, you can't change the size. All of the resizing properties up here are grayed out. And this can get a little bit annoying when we're trying to resize components at different breakpoints or maybe make a simple tweak to an existing card component that we've imported from our design system. When we're dealing with simple component sets like these cards, it's really not that big of a deal. But the pain point becomes much more real when we're dealing with larger component sets like our inputs, forms, and things like that. In this example, I have a very small component set, but you can totally imagine a scenario where this is over 100 variants when we're looking at components like buttons, selects, text areas, and things like that. Now, a pretty common tactic that you'll see in Figma is using base components. And if you're not familiar with base components, I've included a link to another helpful Figma file down here. The general idea, though, is that you can create one component to power all of your variants it allows you to have a single place to make changes. For instance, if we want to update the padding, we can do so here. Now, the issue is, right now, this icon is 24 pixels. But when we get down to smaller versions of our component, like this small, for instance, this is starting to look pretty lopsided. And so ideally, what I want to do is get this down to 16 pixels. Unfortunately, though, I do not have the ability to do that without getting a little bit hacky. And that's really where the icon wrapper comes into play. But first, I wanna give you three examples of what not to do, because I see this happening a little bit too often. First is some people will create multiple base components to represent the different sizing properties. And this becomes a total nightmare with all of the overrides. And honestly, it takes away some of the value of having a base component to begin with, because now we still have multiple places to make these changes and a lot of these overrides can start competing with each other and be hard to keep track of. And the second strategy that I see too often is hiding a bunch of icons inside of our base components. So maybe you would have an icon large and an icon small and this can work. The problem is if we have maybe five or six different icon properties, it gets to be pretty annoying. It's also not clear for other designers to know that these are even available as an option. And then lastly, if we wanna make changes to what these default sizes are, we'd have a ton of hidden icons that we'd have to go through. And that leads me to my third point here, which is a lot of times I will see people create variants of their icon sets where they actually define the sizing properties. And so they might have large, medium, and small. And the problem with this is you have to do this for every single icon, which is a huge time suck. But more importantly, if you decide that you need to change what these values actually are, you'd have to change this sizing property across every single one of your icons which totally sucks. Don't put yourself in that situation. All right, so now that we understand what not to do, let's introduce our icon wrapper. So this is the same example before, only with one key difference. Inside of this base component, I now have an icon wrapper around my icon. And what that allows me to do is every time that I have an icon nested in a component, I can easily come in here and change the size no matter what. It's super convenient, and I only have to set up those sizing properties one time. So now let's take a look at how we actually build this. If we head over here, I give myself a nice blank canvas, and I'm gonna go ahead and insert my arrow icon right here. Now that I have my icon, I'm going to create an auto layout around it, and this auto layout is going to be my icon wrapper, but I wanted to find the size. So let's set the padding to zero because I want the size to be dictated by the icon itself. I'm gonna go ahead and call this SM for small. I'm gonna create a new main component. And then an important thing to remember is 
hit enter to drill into the icon and rename that icon. And that way, when you do style overrides, like maybe you change the color and then you swap out the icon, all of those overrides are going to persist because the name is the same. Okay, so I have one of my variants. I'm going to hit duplicate. I'm going to break it, create a new component, rename it medium, do that one more time, large, and now I can come in here and change the size. So for medium, I might make it 20 pixels, and for large, I might make it 24. So now I have my three sizes. I can come in here, combine this variance, throw it into an auto layout, define the size, and this is my icon wrapper. Now let's see how it's used. So let's say I have a select, I'm going to go ahead and insert this. Now if we crack open this layer list, you'll see this has a normal icon in here right now. So that would mean that I would not be able to resize if I inserted this component as an instance. But if I insert my new icon wrapper instead and delete this icon, this is what is going to give me my variance drop down here. So I might set it to medium by default. I can create a new component. I'm going to call this test so I can refer back to it. Let's insert it to make sure that it works. Voila. I can immediately resize this anywhere. I'm at the point now where I rarely insert a normal icon into my components. I almost always insert my icon wrapper and it lives at the top level in my design system because it's so freaking useful. And the habit I'm in now is if I select this, I know I can hit enter and I'm automatically at this icon. So I'm, I'm constantly going back and forth between shift enter and enter to change the size versus changing the icon itself. It's really convenient once you get used to it. Another helpful thing is if we go to this main component here, a lot of times I'll add a description to the icon wrapper itself and I'll say something along the lines of this component allows you to change the size of the nested icon, hit enter to change the icon itself or something like that. And that way, when someone comes in here and is selecting this layer, they have this nice little prompt here so that they know they can just hit enter and then change this out for a different component. The last really beneficial thing about icon wrappers is it actually allows you to establish a lot of parity with code because this is how engineers are gonna actually structure a code base. They're gonna define the sizes that an icon can take one time in some kind of a utilities file, which this is a pretty common example here. And then when they actually use the icons, they're simply defining size.large so that they know this icon is 32 pixels. Not only does that give you the same mental model as the engineers you're working with, but the most important thing is it gives you a single knob to turn if you wanna make changes that reflect across your entire product ecosystem. If you decide that your icons are a little bit too big, you can simply change what the extra small value is at your icon wrapper and that change will reflect across every single component like magic. It's extremely beneficial. I highly recommend you trying it out. Hopefully this walkthrough makes sense. Last but certainly not least, if you've enjoyed this and you wanna go further in Figma, you should definitely check out Figma Academy. It's a new online course that is built directly in Figma that teaches you all kinds of advanced product design tactics like the icon wrapper. There are over 500 designers in the beta program right now, and we're gonna open up enrollment on January 6th. Thanks for watching, and I'm excited to see more icon wrappers in the wild.